Well, hello again and welcome to Blue Garden Cottage. It's lovely to have you with us. It's pushed um, me to say I am sorry because yet again I am late posting videos today. It has been, as usual, a very busy week. When isn't it at Blue Garden Cottage? But it has been particularly busy this week. We've done loads of jobs again. We've got seeds sown, we've got onions planted out, um, loads of appointments gone to. We've had, I've been for my jab for the vaccine. My son has been helping my daughter get to appointments because they're without a car for a minute. It's been a very long, busy week. I've got loads done in the house as far as tidying up and washing and things, you know, everyday general stuff. Um, I even got work done under the veranda, all sorts done. And we've been working on the rug. Hubby's taken over from me because he's found, because I asked him for some help because I wasn't feeling so good. Um, he helped me and then got stuck in and thought, well, he wants to do that himself. So I'm going to have to find something else to do. <laughs> but I don't mind. He enjoys doing it. It's um, a good switch of thing found that something you can do when you get into the swing of it and a rhythm you, your mind can switch off and you can just keep going so um that's fine i'll leave him to it i'll just make sure i get the loom ready for him every time he wants to do it and he can just carry on um it's a different kind of crafting but that's not what i'm talking to you about this week not particularly garden stuff either i thought i'd just show you something when i was sorting out pots emptying out finally sorting out norman the christmas tree that died i had no idea what caused it why it happened i had no thought about what could possibly have done that one of the points was that for some reason the water going in the pot was not getting to the root ball of the tree and I didn't know why because the immediate root ball around the tree was still dry even though the soil around it was wet and I think it's the way it was grown um, by the growers in such a tight small root ball and then even when it's potted on even if you tease out the roots it's so tight and the water just doesn't want to seem to get in and it looked like red clay around it even though i teased the roots out and put them in water and then put them in the pot didn't help but that was not enough on its own to kill the tree i did find out after chopping up all the tree and putting it into really small pieces to put in the um, compost when i took the trunk and the root ball out of the pot I sifted through the soil and found some bugs root eating bugs and I'm gonna go and show you them right now let me move I am oop, right, there we go here we are those are the chafer grubs little c-shaped little grubs white or creamy color with a little brown head which develop into, oh, let me see if I can get it out without crushing it because they are so, so delicate. Mm, where are you? Can you see that? That's what those little C-shaped grubs turn into. Right, and it is so soft, so delicate in this stage. And it develops into a beetle. Now, obviously, I don't have any adult beetles to show you. It develops into like a little reddy brown beetle. Uh, I'm not sure how big. Twice to three times the size of those grubs. And um, it's a pretty beetle. But they are, they do chew leaves. The larvae chew the soft roots of plants. And they do do a lot of damage. And then they go into that stage before they finally change a bit more and then end up coming up as beetles. Because ground beetles generally do live on, let me see if I can turn it around, and in the soil. There it is. You see it there? Let me see if I can zoom in for you. There you are. It's a little bit dented, my one. 
been in a few battles, I think. That is a ground beetle. Come here, fella. Or lady, whoever you are. Oh, come on. Let's be having you. There you go. That's what it looks like. That is a ground beetle. And they will eat those grubs. Let me put you back down. But they like to hide on or under the soil. You see, it? they're trying to find a place to hide underneath the soil. And I always presume, because I always found them in the same pot, that those were the larvae of the ground beetle, but it's not. Yesterday, I put them all in a tub so I could show you what I found and talk about with you. And I saw the ground beetle grabbing one of the pupa and absolutely munching on it. It was ravenous. Absolutely ravenous. And it ate that grub and it took another one of the small grubs, the larvae, and took it under a mound of soil. So I was a bit shocked. I thought, well, is that cannibalizing its own larvae or something like that? And I thought I'd check it out a bit. So I did some research and I have some information for you. Oh, hang on. Let me get back to my shed so I can sit down. Oh, yeah. Before I forget. There's a reason I'm in so much pain. It's ridiculous. Oh, there we go. So, anyway. Sunday morning. I just thought, I just wanted to clear off the dining table so it's somewhere to sit tidy. Because I'd had paperwork and all sorts over the table so I decided to just clear the table so that at least on Sunday there was a calm in that table in the living room I just wanted something calm and there was a roll of cardboard tape where is it no it's over there a cardboard tape roll I thought I'll just go and put that in the craft studio with all the other stationery and I came into the shed stepped out put my foot wrong twisted over and that was it I crashed into the concrete path there landed strangely I landed mostly on my left side but some of my right side also I don't know how I did that I would love to see it in slow-mo on a video to see how I managed it because my right side had more pain and bruising than the left which is the side I fell on go figure that one only I could do that and my head hit his shed door thankfully nothing broken all still together maybe not mentally but I'm still here aching bruised almost a week later still I am still in pain I am still a bit bruised but I'm fine not even a concrete path is gonna stop me from getting on with my homestead in so you know <laughs> it seems to be becoming a habit between hubby and myself we make a right pair we just shouldn't be let out the door should we we need to be wrapped up in bubble wrap be locked in <laughs> it's ridiculous honestly but anyway so even with that all the pain i still went for my vaccine on the monday still got stuck into the garden back to the topic at hand which was the ground beetles which i've always known to be good guys in the garden they are predators what kind of predators really i had no idea because in further on further research it turns out that they are opportunist predators and pretty voracious they will eat anything from aphids to um, let's see what it said beetle larvae mites um, moth larvae um, they would even some of them would even eat slugs and caterpillars most of them they dwell they live and feed on or in the ground but some of them would climb up plants to eat caterpillars and aphids as well so they're pretty good um, predators they're also very seasonal predators that's why they're survivors and opportunists they will have whatever is in season eco sense 
They're very good ecologists because they have whatever is in season. They're omnivorous feeders. Um, we don't want them to eat all the butterfly and moth caterpillars because even though those do damage in our gardens, some of them are from pretty rare butterflies and moths. I don't mind them eating the cabbage white caterpillars because we they are nowhere near anywhere near the extinction. They are just they are a big problem. However, I mean, I'd like to leave nature to sort those problems and just protect my crops a bit better from them and get more savvy. That's fine. They even, oh, they even eat leather jacket larvae. You know, the le leather jackets you find in the lawn, underneath the lawn, sometimes they fat, fleshy grubs. And they also eat soft roots, especially in lawns. Um, so, yeah, if they eat leather jackets and cutworms, cutworms as well, apparently. Oh, about habitats, if you want to encourage them, they like log piles and piles of leaf litter. So if you've got a corner, a shady corner of the garden, that you can put up a pile of logs, not just twigless, but logs. They like logs. And um, if you bury a couple of the logs just under the soil level and then pile up the logs so they stay moist and then put some leaf litter on all sorts of little invertebrates and insects will house in that pest control let nature do the job for you i'm all for that um so yeah that was brilliant when i thought found that so i was happy with finding that out but i, I wasn't too happy about them eating the chafer grubs because I mean, I don't mind them keeping the numbers down, but I would like a couple of the chafer grubs to grow and become the beetle that they're going to become because it's a pretty beetle. I know it does harm, and I'm sure some of the birds will eat the adult beetles as well. But I'll leave nature to sort the numbers out, and hopefully some will survive. I'm sure they will. In my garden, there's enough damage every year, especially potted plants. Oh, my goodness. Chafer grubs love potted plants, and I think that's because the chafer bugs the beetles themselves are flying beetles and i think they can get up into hanging baskets and pots and things like that to lay their eggs but the ground beetles do actually get up into the pots because that's where i found the 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 um the ground beetle or rove beetles i think rove beetles are more like the devil's coachman the little black ones that look like earwigs those i have actually seen one of those eating a baby slug a, a very small slug so they're also good predators in the garden so i welcome them so yeah i think that's really what was on my mind this week doing the things that i've been doing is the natural balance of things i don't use pesticides i pay the price for it because i lose a lot of crops and stuff but I'm happy to put up with some loss and just find more innovative ways of trying to protect the crops and let nature do its thing. There has to be. Oh, hello, Buttons. Hello, girl. What are you doing? Who's this? Look up there. Oh, yeah. She always comes. Whenever I'm in the shed, she comes and has a look. What you doing? Funny girl. There you go. If you observe long enough, as one of the permaculture principles is to observe. Just watch. Do nothing and watch. And be happy to know that there is some balance in my garden. I must be doing something right. If there are predators right there where the pests are, and I've seen them eating the pests, then I must be doing something right. The best thing to do to encourage nature is to, to make the habitats for them. And I really do need to sort out behind my shed to build the wood store and build some habitats under the hedge in a quiet, dark place for them. I am just going to have to build a hedgehog house, a frog house and a wood pile for the grubs. I shall be building and making more bug hotels around the garden. I think that's one of the things I'm going to be doing this year. So I want lace wings. And oh, 
deterrents for the mice. They do so much damage. I don't know that I'll have any apples this year. Between the weather, the insects, the house sparrows chewing, picking off all the little leaf sprouts, and the mice now chewing the bark off my apple trees. I, I'd be amazed if we have anything at all on the tree, any apples, let, and leaves, let alone apples. I'm, I'm just going to have to trim off and maybe sacrifice another year of not much fruit at all because we've got to be, I'm going to have to figure something out. So watch the space to see what I try and do about the mice. So yeah, I have to figure out what to do about all these critters. We're inviting wildlife into our garden and some of them can find their way into the house. Last year, early, early last year, was it the year before, 2019? 2019, we had house sparrows come into the house from the front. We had the front door open. House Sparrow came into the living room and was happily sitting on top of the bookcase. So when we invite wildlife into the garden, be aware they can make their way into the house. So we just have to do a few little things to prevent this and just to be aware. And even though we have three different neighborhood cats that come make their way through the garden, they still got in, but there you go. Wildlife critters. Can't live with them, can't live without them. Don't want to live without them. We just need to make sure they're just, that there's a balance in nature and they're not in the house. And that is a very tricky thing to do. So I've sat here nattering to you about bugs, about mice, about pests, predators. And solving these problems, I've natted on for a while. I hope I haven't bored you to death. Oh, listen to that wind. We've had a glorious week weather-wise this week. Absolutely glorious. If you've had summer temperatures over 20 degrees for three days, and it's been glorious sunshine, and we've been able to get a, quite a few jobs done. But next week, oh, there's flutterings of snow in early morning Monday. There's hailstorms on is it Tuesday or Wednesday and temperatures all week between the lowest between one and two degrees early in the day and the highest around eight or nine degrees later in the day and that's Celsius so that's cold although April is the month of showers because I always remember them calling them April showers that bring the May flowers so, if things are normal and going the way they should go, April should be very wet. But we've had all the wet for a number of Aprils, right the way through from November last year, all the way through till the end of March. We don't want any more rain, thank you very much. We've had all the rain for April, it's out of the way. Can we just have the flowers and sunshine, please? We've had enough of winter. But anyway, I've got to go. The day moves on, the light is fading. Uh, oh, and it's Easter weekend. Have a lovely Easter, people. By the time you get this, it will be. Well, I'll post it today, but tomorrow is the beginning of the Easter weekend. So have a wonderful Easter, whatever you're doing, whoever you're spending it with, however you're passing it, with um, whatever thoughts and traditions and time you're spending with people, if you can. And I shall speak to you again next week about the garden, showing you exactly what we've been getting up to in the last two weeks because it has been busy. Slowly busy, but probably feels that way because we take so much longer to do it, so it takes us hours and hours and hours, but it gets done. All right, until next week, hopefully more organized. And on time, by the afternoon, by midday, I'm hoping I shall be able to post between midday and 2 o'clock on Thursday next week. <sighs> I have a rant in my head about that, but I'm not going to do it. I just want to leave on a pleasant note. Speak to you all again soon, darlings. I'm not going to say, you know what I want you to do, don't you? About the liking and the sharing and the subscribe. You know, I don't want to say that again. Whatever you do, I hope I see you again next week. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.